Well, uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm Enzo. I'll be talking about uh, SMBFS, which is a project, a side project that I started after uh, working on SIFs for for some time. Uh, quick intro. Like I said, I'm Enzo Matsumiya. I've been at SUSE since uh, 2018, and I spent three years in the L3 support department, helping with uh, several bugs, mostly on kernel side. Uh, and then I moved to the Samba team as a CIF scale developer, uh, which is the kernel module for the SMB protocol, for those that are not aware. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the agenda. I'll, it's just for the slides, so I'll follow on. Um, I would like to, to start with a quick history about uh, of the SMB protocol, which is a proprietary protocol from Microsoft. They released the SMB one in 1996 to support file sharing and printer sharing and other resources across the network. Uh, version 2.0 was released in 2006. 2006. Uh, so this is important because this this was uh, we will use this time frame for later slides. Uh, Ten years using just the first version of the protocol. So when SMB2 was released, it improved uh, security and the performance of uh, the client and server applications. In 2009, uh, version 2.1 with a minor improvements was released. Uh, 2012, SMB3 was a bigger milestone for the protocol as well. Uh, it, it improved uh, performance and security as well on top of 2.0. Uh, and then 2013, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, 302 version 2, 302, which then Microsoft started uh, allowing disabling uh, SMB1 from Windows products. Uh, meanwhile, on the, on the Linux side, uh, Steve Scale module was supporting all of those versions on, on, from the same from from the same module. And then uh, 2016, three. 1.1.1 was released, which is the latest version of the protocol today. So to this day, this is this is the most recent version, is the most secure, the fastest, and, I, and the, the one with most uh, features uh, to <clears throat> for for great performance in enterprise, both enterprise and home appliances. And between 2016 and to, to 2022. Several products, uh, NAS vendors, uh, network, network attached storage vendors, and also other similar products like, like virtualization products started disabling SMB1 by default, which is, uh, well, took all those 20 years to start. But as we'll see, some the reasoning to, to do so in a few in a moment. So yeah, well, the problem is that that gap, that big gap, where SMB one was between as when SMB one was released and why it's still in use today. Which brings to supporting legacy protocols. Uh, like I said, in Steve scale, the Linux module, we uh, we wanted to support every protocol available. From the same module, and it's it was not separated neither in code, neither in, in, in the module, in, in, in not in, in virtually any way. So supporting legacy protocols was a bomb waiting to explode. The expectation when when we do that, when Microsoft released newer versions with improvements, was that. Uh, organizations and users uh, kept their, their things running without requiring uh, immediate infra infrastructure upgrades. So you don't have to spend money and time to um, uh, immediate 
change. So you have time to, to do everything. And then you start rolling out upgrades slowly and progressively and without major conflicts. And in the meanwhile, the other protocols and appliances and clients and servers can also start phasing out the older stuff from their code. And everyone is happy, of course. Companies, users, system administrators, uh, developers, everyone is happy because you don't have to support and deal with uh, legacy stuff anymore. And then you profit, of course. But the reality is, SMB1 is infamous now because of the, its several security problems. Uh, well, inherent, it was by design on the protocol because of, of, of the design choices they made. Uh, and this led to several CVEs, critical CVEs, which affected the whole world and millions and millions of, of devices. Well, the most famous one is. Uh, well, this is this is a, a, a search from Shodan, which exp which shows exposed SMB one servers in, on the internet. This search was done on on the last week, October ten. Uh, there are one million devices exposed, and this is a shallow uh, search. If you look more, you probably find more. So these are exposed to the internet and running a software that, that's over 20 years uh, old and has no security whatsoever when security was not even a topic to be considered. And then we have a recommendation from Hong Kong University to users to divide, to disable, uh, to enable, how to enable SMB1 so uh, users' devices can access their medical appliances. So this is another question from Stack Overflow, where a user wants to enable SMB1 and disable SMB2 and 3, which is something completely uh, strange, I would say, and not recommended, of course. Uh, this is from a NAS vendor also to activate SMB1 support. And this is yet another software uh, vendor that uh, has instructions, official and support instructions on how to enable SMB1. So yes, people are still using it. And uh, there are still vendors, uh, as in server vendors, appliance vendors, that still enables it because the user uh, users requires it for, let's say, easy access to those devices. So yeah, those are server problems. SMB1 is, was attacked uh, by the WannaCry uh, ransomware. Um, for those not familiar, I would say to look up on my proceedings paper or on Wikipedia. It was a big attack, a ransomware attack on, on SMB1 devices across the world. And CISCO is a client. How would that uh, affect a client software? Well, like I said, the demand the usual demand and supply for for such a, a protocol when there, when you have a protocol version and then you upgrade those those those, those versions you the the trend is to so users stop using it and then you have an oversupply from the vendors where the devices will support it but users don't care about it anymore because they're using the newest versions anyway which shows on the graph on the left. This, these are, by the way, these are uh, completely made up graphs. I just uh, <laughs> hand drawn them to illustrate what I see as the issue with uh, how users are impacting the, why, why SMB1 has, hasn't gone away yet. And then on the right, we have a graph showing, the, the blue line shows uh, that users either want or don't want to or can't move away from SMB1. And this makes the vendors on the orange line, uh, to, makes them uh, required to provide support for SMB1. 
because people still use it. They need it for their for their business, for their um, IT infra, and so on. And as as you saw in the previous slides, these are not old infrastructure. These are, for example, Windows 10 run, runs on, on modern hardware, and people are using it, and they are still needing SMB1 and wanting to use it for uh, the easiness of their of its setup because you don't need to set up every authentication stuff and deal with a uh, security firewall and so on. So, what are the options to fade out to move away from SMB one? Maybe we could just cut cut support from it, just slash it from the code, but it's not that easy. So I was thinking about this, and then I, my solution, my proposal, was to start slowly from the Swift client, <clears throat> and this came to modernize the code from the mod for the module, because uh, it's, it's one way that I see that we can start forcing users to adapt uh, to new newer version, newer newer protocol versions. So in this, this in my quest to improve the module, I had set uh, these major goals, which was to first disassociate the the, mo the module nomenclature from the SMB1 era, which brings the infamous uh, its infamous uh, cargo. It's something that's not good to have. Like if you're using SMB3, you shouldn't have you shouldn't be using a module named sifs.ko and everything else in the module is is called sifs something well remove old dead and the supported code uh, like i said because the module wanted to support all of the versions since 1996 we end up piling up everything on top of of each other so this created a mess in the code, and this is something that I wanted to clean up. And of course, if we're going to remove old stuff, this gives us room to improve and implement everything that's missing from T311, which brings us more performance improvements and security features, and so on. And by doing that, by having those major goals implemented, the by byproducts of that work would be well, SMB1 gone for good from the module. Um, SMB311 by default, which is not the case today. Uh, today, the, by default, if you don't specify the version that you want to use, uh, the module will send um, an array of, of versions that, that you want you can use, and then the server will reply with the, the protocol versions that it supports, and the highest one will be used, be, the one agreed between server and client. Um, I'll talk more ab about this later. Uh, modernize the code, which also means uh, split everything. That, uh, a lot of things were created as globals, as uh, a giant monolithic structure to handle all of the protocols and this is something I, I wanted to improve. Um, and of course, end up with a new module name, which I named uh, SMBFS. And I'll talk about it as well in a moment. So yeah, well, this associating the, the module name from SMB1 terms, SMB1 terminology, which uh, with SIFs and SMB1 are, are interchangeably used. Uh, yeah, well, SMBFS was an idea I had to, well, have something that's not tied to the protocol version. So we don't use, for example, SMB3 or something like that. Uh, so it states what protocol is being used. It states that it's, it, it is a file system. And we have already FS, SMBFS common and FS, KSMBD in the kernel, which are the SMBFS common is, is the shared code with uh, KSMBD. 
where SKSMBD is the kernel server for the SMB protocol. Um, and I have sent a series to, to do that renaming to upstream. One of the uh, discussions that we had was around having it inside. Uh, I mistyped it in the slide, and now I see it. But would be to have the uh, FS slash SMB slash client server and common directories inside it. Pretty much like, uh, for example, NVMe does. It has the target and host code inside the NV NVMe directory. But yeah, well, another discussion that came up was the drawback of doing backports, which is something, well, it sucks. And the, the, the problem was that SMBFS was the name, was the previous name of the SIFS module a uh, couple of, uh, um, maybe 10 years ago or something like that. And that could, well, it could raise issues that we're not aware yet. I will talk about this later as well. Um, so one, one, one of the suggestions was to have two separate modules while users uh, adapt their infrastructure to to handle both SIFs, just doing SMB1, and then another module doing SMB2, as, excuse me, SMB2.1 and above, which uh, where we, uh, inside SIFs, SIFs.ko, we consider 1.0 and 2.0 being legacy versions, and 2.1 to 3.1.1, we consider them to be the most recent versions, which are compatible between between each other. So yeah, well, remove old code, unsupported code, dead code. Uh, well, like I said, removing SMB1 code only would already be a, a, a good cleanup in the module. Uh, Microsoft has, is already disabling it in latest versions by default, I believe Windows 2022 server and Windows 11 doesn't come up with uh, SMB1 enable anymore. Uh, well, NAS vendors follow suit and they also are starting to, to release products with SMB1 disabled. Samba is already planning. They have the patches to do it. Um, but I'm not sure if when it's going to be uh, released upstream and yeah. Uh, well, and yeah, detach every structure, every code related uh, with the SIFS prefix from, from the module to something more modern. Um, we, we, are, we also have a lot of commented code in, in SIFS which are the, uh, which are uh, debug code. The, there's a lot of uh, what if code, uh, for example, uh, if we did this, would it work? And then with a comment and then a part of the code commented as well. And why not code or, so you have a, a part of the code there and then it says, uh, why not do this way? And it's commented as well. So this just piles up as um, cruft for developers and bypass and other and unreachable code as well. Well, these are the latest uh, SMB 3.11 uh, performance and security features. Uh, these are already implemented, uh, director caching, AES GCM encryption, uh, file write through, pre authentication integrity, SMB directory, which is SMB over RDMA, and several other improvements. So some that were missing was AES GMAX signing, uh, message signing, which uh, SIFs used to sign messages between client and server. Currently, we only have AES CMAC, which is based on AES uh, GCM, sorry, CCM, 
and AES Max based on AES GCM, where we ha we can use hardware acceler acceleration to uh, speed up things. Message compression, we don't have any implemented yet. Uh, the FS domain and DC referral caching, this saves a few round trips between cloud client server where we can cache the domains and uh, the DC names of of the of some of the DFS uh, shares that users are mounting. And of course, the quick protocol, which is the our hardest one to accomplish, but would be something cool to have in the near future. future. Well, the byproducts, well, set SMB 311 as default. Like I said, this would force users to adapt the latest protocol. My idea was to have the uh, 311 as default, as in, if you don't specify anything, you, you should use 311. But if you want to use anything older than that, down to 2.1, you should explicitly set it on the mount option. Uh, of course, uh, 1.0 and 2.0 are gone. Uh, and modernize the code. Uh, this byproduct that I that I I saw coming was to remove all that glue code that I said that uh, interfaces between uh, different protocols, which serves as an interface for the different protocols. So we have a single structure that holds several function pointers. Uh, so each protocol version can implement their their operation and set to, to those function to those pointers in, in the code. Uh, well, again, 2.1 to 3.11, 90% of them are use the same function to the same stuff. So this is kind of uh, redundant. Uh, and well, the globals defines and structs to, to deal with all that glue code is also cluttering the code. And well, we have several uh, shared, some, some shared code in SMBFS common directory, so KSMBD can use it as well. And um, the idea is to have even more so we don't have uh, the same code in two places, which would which uh, SMBFS and KSMBD, and have a standard coding style for the module. Uh, this is something that really bothers me on the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, there, there are some several inconsistencies everywhere, uh, and this is something that I wanted to to do to improve. Let me yes. Let me read the Dave's question. If SMB one removal dependent on first having working SMB two POSIX extensions. Well, if, if you mean on on uh, it's not really dependent, but it would be good to have. But yes, w one reason is is that uh, most users. Um, rely on that, but they, they don't necessarily need them. Yes, uh, yeah, David Motor is, is working on that. Uh, we have a, a, a specification for SMB3 POSIX extensions going on, and uh, some work on SIFs to improve also the POSIX extensions. So yeah, well. It's like I said, it's not really dependent, but uh, most users, uh, since the servers uh, has, has it enabled, users think might think they need them, the, the POSIX extensions. So continuing, well, this is an example of the server uh, glue code that I, I've mentioned. Each server that SIFS connects to creates uh, one of these uh, server ops structure on the left. And then on the right, you can see that's used, well, just normally. 
but then it will call whatever protocol version implemented that call, for example, for open or sync read. And like I said, this is used mostly between 1.0, 2.0, and then from 2.1 onwards, everything is pretty much similar. My assessment was that around only 10% different between the between when between them. And this is well, this structure is quite big. It's maybe three times more lines than that it's show. It's shown here. This is a this is an example of the inconsistency. For example, camel case is ugly by itself, but it's used when when used inconsistently. It's even worse. And this is all over CIF scale model. These are just minor examples, uh, but something that I wish that could be wiped away. So yeah, well, after submitting my patches, like I said, uh, renaming a module is not easy. Renaming a, st a structure that's used across the, the whole module is not easy as well, and would create a lot of work for backporters. Myself being doing backport work from time to time as well, I I just dislike it. I believe just like everyone else. So yeah, when you have conflicts, it's a minor uh, annoyance. But then if you have a mod, a whole module directory and several variables and structures renamed. This will cause um, a major pain for developers and backporters. So yeah, I'm looking for suggestions and ideas here. If anyone has ever done something similar, has ever been through something through this experience within the kernel, please reach out to me or talk in the chat or turn on your microphone because. This is something that's uh, um, discussing with uh, the module maintainer, Steve French. He told me that this is desired. So uh, we want, he wants to, to, to have this merged, but he, we want to do it in the, the smoothest way possible. So like I said, we can avoid m uh, major trouble for, for everyone. The other problem, like I said, a uh, couple, uh, several years ago, the SIFS was named uh, SMBFS. Then it was renamed to SIFS. Uh, and SMBFS was moved to the staging directory. And then I would propose SMBFS again. This is not a major problem. But as you can see, the Git history would look weird. Uh, you can see here. The last commit mentioning SMBFS from the staging area is from 2010. And then re reintroducing the same directory with the same name would look weird. So you, this, this doesn't make sense to me. Again, this is something that I would like to hear from others if anyone has experience with doing so, if what are the possible issues of doing so. Um, is there a smooth way that we can transition from this? Or even if someone has any other suggestions for naming the module or whatever, I would be open to hear. Uh, so yeah, this, the status of SMBFS project and to do, well, fruits of SMBFS. So as I worked on SMBFS, I, I cleaned up the module and then I wanted to implement stuff. I, I see a lot of, a lot of things that could be uh, merged upstream in CIFS code. And then I've been doing so. Uh, some fixes, minor improvements, and these are the major ones that I have noted. ASG Max signing, I have a series that's working, but there are a few problems still, which I should finish soon. Uh, but the 
main infrastructure that I wanted to refactor is there. Like I said, some small steps to, to accomplish the final goals. Um, the same for message compression. I have a working patch as well, but it's not even um, working yet. Um, I mean, it builds, but it's not working. Uh, DFS domain and DC referrals. These are minor improvements. Like I said, it caches the domain names and DC names from from uh, from the forest, and then you save a few round trips when you're reconnecting or other clients are reconnecting, other mounts, sorry, are reconnecting to, to the same forest. And the quick, quick protocol, uh, something I've been working for maybe a year, more than a year now. Uh, I started in the N NVMe group, NVMe people to do the TLS, in the kernel. And then when I joined this summer team, I started moving my perspective to this to the SIFS uh, perspective. So yeah, quick protocol depends on TLS. Uh, the protocol itself, I have some uh, base, but not nothing works yet. Uh, but still, we have to wait for the TLS stuff to be sorted out. So we can have any uh, something useful and good to to have upstream. Well, another uh, status of, of the SMBFS code uh, was I could cut 30% just by removing SMB1 code. Uh, from uh, This is comparing to the current FS uh, code directory. So yeah, this with this was just as uh, removing the obvious, obvious stuff um, that's related to SMB1. And like I said, there are the, that, those uh, glue codes and related stuff that could also be gone. And we could maybe even reach to 40% or something like that, which is quite a chunk, in my opinion. And to do is, well, have all those patches, all those major goals that I have getting upstream, and then get the refactor patches in smaller chunks upstream as well, so we can uh, minimize the impact for backporters, like I said. Um, well, the problem here is uh, refactoring patches are not seen as uh, useful. So, for example, the maintainer, uh, one, one of the suggestions what to refactor as I fix something or as I implement something else. Uh, a refactor just by doing a refactor is not really useful. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, another topic to discuss is disabling SMB1 in Isla products. I'm not sure, I don't know any uh, project manager talking about this. I, I haven't heard about this, but uh, seeing that SMB1 will soon be disabled in Samba upstream, maybe we'll get it soon on SLI as well. And then we need to start thinking on SIFs and maybe synchronizing the release with those between those two would be nice. So David says SMB1 is disabled in Tumbleweed. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually talking in, in, in SLI. So um, I'm talking about support, uh, as in um, where people won't want to rebuild the kernel to enable the SMB1 code in, in SIFS module. So yeah. And uh, that's it. Well, if anyone has any questions or any of the suggestions that I mentioned, I appreciate your time.
Looks like perhaps there's no more questions. Last call, and then I'll stop the recording if we're all done. One, se one second. I would like to to just chat a little bit about this uh, interesting work. Um, okay. So, Enzo, uh, you have uh, you have approached, as, as you said, you have approached the maintainer, Steve French, which is favorable, which is fantastic. Like that's uh, exactly the person you need to uh, get on board. But I understand you haven't sent him patches yet. So what was the exchange with the maintainer? What he did you agree upon? Like, what? No, I did send patches to okay. for the rename. Um, I think I've put the, the link. I put the link on, on the proceedings paper. So yeah, well, like I said, we, it kind of uh, was not well seen, as in from the developer perspective. Uh, everyone wants to move away from 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 the SIFS nomenclature. Uh, everyone from the SIFS uh, from the Samba team that's really that's aware of of SIFS, the mo the kernel module. Um, okay, and uh, the maintainer himself uh, wants to to have these changed, but as as uh, like I said, uh, uh, they want to do this smoothly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. But we all want a pony. Like you need to also say, yeah, there is no smooth way to rename a, a directory. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I said. Well, one one of the suggestions was to also just rename the module, so we can start with, uh, for example, F smbfs.ko, but stays in, in the fs sifs gear yeah. directory. Um, which is, well, it's weird, but OK. And then we move, because this would affect uh, users, right? Yeah. If, we, if you rename the module, only users will see it. If you change the code, uh, developers will be affected. So this, this is a good balance between not affecting backports and, and so he's uh, he's fine affecting user but not developers. I would say the other way around. Like you should preserve user and developer will find their way. What, what, what did he say? Yeah, yeah. Well, in this case, uh, we want the, the the inverse. We want users to not uh, relate correlate the SIFS module, SIFS, the SIFS naming to the module in, in anymore, because SIFS okay. is inherently correlated to SMB1, which is which means insecure, right? Yes. So we want something like, oh, I use SMBFS or something else or whatever else. Uh, and then we can start uh, saying that uh, SMBFS, something modern, is something uh, that's not SMB1. <laughs> mm. So that, that was the idea, to affect users, yes. Oh, there is David in the chat saying, I recall Steve French talking about aliasing uh, SM, uh, SMBFS to CFS, CIFS. Did that ever happen? And so, uh, yeah, yeah, we have alias for uh, SMB3. Uh, so you can mod probe SMB3, which will load uh, CFSKO just as well, but still just an alias. Uh, and still, CFSKO is still known as CFSKO. Mm in the majority of the time. So yeah, the way, the way, yeah, sorry, please, please go no, ahead. No, yeah, you see, it's it's more of a, about the, the fame of the name or of the, the that it brings when you mention it. So when you say SIFS, you're talking about SMB1 and something that's 20, over 20 years old. And we don't want, uh, well, what I, what I got is that they don't want this anymore. Yeah, clearly, the, the, the sort of a rebrand of uh, of the module, which uh, is something desirable that your patch will bring. Um, when you mentioned the Git history, honestly, I mean, it's fine. Like, I see refactoring all the time, and when you do Git blame uh, to see who added that part of the code, you, ha you usually have to, to do one or two hops because there is a refactoring in the middle. Like this stuff happens every other day. I I don't see that as a sort of a stopgap. I would, um, if you want a case, because I think you should focus on 
checking when this happened oh five minutes left okay. uh, when this happened in the past like did anyone else did what do what you're trying to do now and you bring your case up right so for example in the scheduler there have been a few refactorings i can send you links but uh, uh, some headers were moved around back in the day the new directory called SCAD was introduced so those things happen and I what I th I think sh uh, you should try to do is to um, bring facts like hard facts to the, the maintainer and uh, um, so that you are it's difficult to dismiss you with uh, some generic uh, advice like yeah be smooth like no there is this way or that way which one you like like it's one of the two it's not like the smooth non-existent uh, scenario like at some point uh, um, you need to and also you need to like make forward progress instead of like negotiation at some point so start small and uh, try to get a foot in the door and uh, make this as actionable and quantifiable as possible you don't want to be dismissed with yeah kid uh, try again no you you sort of want to to make uh, to 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 let the the community know that you really care about this that there are real benefits uh, illustrate those benefits and that you are not easily discouraged so uh, obviously working with them not in a hostile and confrontational way but uh, um, in a like forward progress baby steps uh, if Steve French agrees on this it's a good starting point but uh, there is more to, to do yeah yeah well he, he agrees and he wanted that like I said but uh, he wanted also to other people other uh, reviewers to acknowledge or right. uh, approve the patch which right. was the case it didn't um, and well like you said well uh, when I submitted the patch I, I told him privately that uh, this looked like some megalomaniac uh, commit but um, he, he said well it, it's okay to rename it will be a major pain for a lot of people but we need this, uh, you know. Yeah. It's 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 time to 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 like you said. The, uh, there's no smooth way to do this to rename a whole module, a whole directory. So yeah, but uh, the other parts, like you said, I'm I'm doing slowly. I can I refactoring whatever I can to implement something that's small, so I can use that as a leverage to 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 reach my those goals that I've set for myself. Yeah. Another argument is that whatever pain, uh, like backport, etc., is a temporary pain. That's going to be yeah. three years, four years, then it's gone. But this protocol has been around forever, like, I don't know, yeah. 12, 20 years, more. So uh, there's also the time horizon for the benefit is larger than these temporary um, uh, obstacles, temporary uh -huh. uh, yeah, drawbacks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Thank you, Ant. Okay. If there are no other questions, I'll stop the recording. Is any more questions? Thank you, everybody, for coming, and thank you to Enzo for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.